Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying a war drama film, entitled 72 Hours, Martyr Who Never Died. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. This is based on Jaswant Singh Rawat's life. A rifleman from the 4th Gurwal Rifle Infantry during the 1962 Indochina War who showed immense bravery and unparalleled dedication to shield his native country against invaders. He guarded his post against all odds. He died a hero standing his ground and safeguarding India against the Chinese intruders. The movie begins in 1962, just 15 years after India gained independence from British rule, a looming India-China war was fated. On October 20, 1962, the inevitable war began. At the Dehradun railway station, there was a different mood that day. Shri Guman Rawat, Jaswant Singh Rawat's father, gathers himself as a wooden box is lowered down from the train. Nothing could prepare him for that moment. Inside are the remains of his warrior son and rifleman Jaswant Singh Rawat. He was not your ordinary soldier. The casket is then placed on a horse-drawn carriage and is taken to the family. When they arrive, officers carry the casket towards their house, where Leela Rawat, Jaswant's mother, who loved him so dearly, is being comforted by her family and friends. As the casket is placed on the ground, Leela can no longer contain her emotions and weeps, hugging the wooden box. Her son was a brave soul who could have survived if he wanted to. Instead, her son sacrificed his very life to serve his country. In a flashback, Leela recounts the period when Jaswant was a little child with a strong ambition to become a soldier. Jasu would be his given name. Despite the fact that she was poor, she would constantly push him to work hard in order to be successful. While attending school, a scout leader visited their classroom and asked if they'd want to become scouts. This moment would light a fire in his heart. Jaswant was one of those who raised their hands without a second thought. He then went home very excited to share the news with his parents. Jaswant asked his father for a scout uniform as this was required the next day. He asked for more time, but Jaswant begged that the uniform would be needed tomorrow. As his parents discussed how to get the uniform, his mother mentioned how challenging it was for his father as he had to walk long distances to make a living. Jaswant overheard them and promised his parents that he'd buy his father a bicycle one day. While still young, Jaswant showed patriotism and leadership potential. Officers at the school would see that he was constantly the center of attention. His commitment to serving others was palpable. This guy was on the verge of etching his name into the annals of history. Jaswant was able to earn 17 rupees. He asked his father for additional money to buy the bicycle that he promised him. After receiving the money, he asked his father to wait for him as he went on his way to the store riding in the rear seat of a bicycle as it was driven by his friend, Tyrelock. Little did he know that Tyrelock would betray him moments later. Tyrelock took him somewhere where armed men waited for them. He was beaten up and robbed. His money was stolen, and the bike that he rented was also taken by Tyrelock and his friends. Jaswant pleaded and tried to fight them off, but he was outnumbered. He had no choice but to give up. Jaswant was devastated by his misfortune and went to his school to get a transfer certificate since he had lost interest in continuing his studies. He then returned home to his mother, certain of his intention to pursue his ambition. He intended to join the military. He underwent military training for nine long months before returning back home. He was given 28 days leave before being deployed to the battlefield. His parents were thrilled to see him back, but the excitement was only immediate as 28 days were over before they knew it. Jaswant was now leaving their house for the final time. As Jaswant was on his way to their camp, China was starting to invade the northeast front of India, including Karadeo. That's when the 4th Gurwal Rifles Infantry was ordered to defend. After establishing the perimeter, Jaswant asked his post commander, Chandra Mohan, why China was initiating war. Chandra explained to him that China believed that Karadeo was the southern part of Tibet, a region that China always wanted to conquer. Chandra added that the conflict began during the Tibetan revolution against Chinese rule. Jaswant then shared his knowledge that it was due to the Dalai Lama escaping and then getting help from India. Chandra was impressed by Jaswant's knowledge of history. While the soldiers patrolled the area, a sudden movement behind a tree put them on their toes. One of the two girls came out, and a soldier almost killed her, but he missed. Their names were Nora and Oi. They were civilians looking for their yak, domesticated cattle. Jaswant sent them home and asked them to not come back as it's not safe. As fate would have it, Nora and Jaswant would have several moments. At one point, Jaswant caught her following him. He then confronted her, but she denied that she was. He also found out where she lived and pretended to be thirsty. Nora tried to hide at first, then decided to give in when Jaswant threatened to leave. 
there was something special brewing between the two. The Indian military officers were sure that, despite being outnumbered, their men had the abilities and understanding of the terrain necessary to win the battle, despite the fact that their weapons were inferior to those used by the Chinese forces. The 4th Gurwal rifles were a formidable force in their own right. They were prepared to go to any length to protect their turf. One night, Jaswant's parents were listening on the radio when the devastating news came that the war against China would be inevitable. The Chinese were determined to invade while India was ready to defend their land. His mother was distraught, knowing that her son was on the front line. She had every reason too, especially knowing that her son loved his country dearly. While patrolling at night, Jaswant's platoon was tasked to patrol an area that's been occupied by the Chinese army. They managed to catch one of them by sneaking up behind him and grabbing his leg. They tried to put a cloth in his mouth as the order was to take him back to camp alive to get some information. That was easier said than done as the soldier was making too much noise trying to survive and get the attention of his comrades. They did not have a choice but to kill him. They went back to patrol all areas of the mountains but saw no sign of impending attack from the Chinese. The calm before the storm. They found that odd as the tension was already rising before that. The Chinese soldiers launched a surprise attack one night, coming in from different directions as fate would have it. The 4th Gurwal rifle stood its ground and started firing. The battle ensued, and Chinese soldiers were dropping like flies. Then, there was silence. To the surprise of the Indian soldiers, the Chinese halted the attack and retreated. The colonel knew this was a strategic move to know their number and positions. He warned his men to embrace for their return. The colonel was right on point since the Chinese launched another strike only seconds later. They were more aggressive this time, and they were able to gain more ground. Members of the infantry were slaughtered one by one as the battle progressed. This did not deter Jaswant from maintaining his position until the dust had cleared. The colonel begged for reinforcement as they didn't have enough soldiers and ammunition, but the request was immediately rejected. He was then ordered to leave the post instead. Chandra delivered the news to the rest of the infantry that he's also been ordered to leave the assignment. He did not want to order his men, but rather, he allowed them to decide. Jaswant knew he had to stay and protect the border at all costs. This was what he signed up for, and there was nothing that could change his mind. He then went on and confronted the Chinese alone. This gave Chandra and the rest of the men the needed courage to stay and fight as well. During this encounter, Chandra noticed that the Chinese were using high-powered MMG, which put his men at a disadvantage. He asked for three volunteers to take care of it, and Jaswant immediately threw his hat in the ring no matter how dangerous this task would be. Along with Gopal and Trilok, they were tasked to attack the base where the MMG was operated from. This was completely risky as the camp where the MMA was, was overlooking their location. Nevertheless, there was no turning back at this point. Trilok would get killed right away, while Jaswan and Gopal were able to advance their position and invade the base, killing all the MMG operators in the process. Jaswan asked Gopal to take the MMG with them before the Chinese reinforcements arrived. Jaswant got hit in the head, but the combat helmet saved him. The momentum of the gunshot sent him rolling down the hill, but he would survive. The rest of the soldiers were killed, including Chandra. Jaswant was now on his own. The first of 72 hours that he'd spent fighting against the Chinese forces began. Jaswant made a vow to not give up one inch of his motherland. He recalled what he told Chandra one time. Surrounded by the vital forces of the Chinese military, Jaswant utilized the MMG and confronted them head on. He would shift position and use other guns to eliminate one Chinese soldier at a time. While the battle was underway, Nora rushed toward the battlefield to be with Jaswant. Jaswant did not see this coming. She made a promise to help and protect Jaswant. This was her only chance. The Chinese aimed at Nora, but Jaswant was quick to save her. He then begged Nora to go back home, but Nora wanted to be true to her promise. She would not let him be alone again, even if that cost her life. Jaswant taught Nora how to use a gun. She'd then help him against the Chinese. When the Chinese were closing in, they had no choice but to abandon their base. Jaswant got hit in the thigh but giving up was never an option. Nora mustered up the courage to fire back. She managed to kill some of the enemies. Wounded and weak, Nora knew that Jaswant needed more help. She did not want him to die like that. She wanted to head back to the village to ask for help despite Jaswant's plea. As she was leaving, Chinese forces threw a grenade at her and killed her. Jaswant could only watch in disbelief. Jaswant grabbed a piece of her cloth, tied it to his gun, and continued defending his post. When the attack became overwhelming, Jaswant would run towards a safe location and use any firearms available. He was not going to give up. 
His love for his country was much stronger than his fear of dying. Sensing that the Chinese were within the perimeter, Just Want confronted them head on. While he was able to kill some of them, he was also severely wounded. As the Chinese closed in to finish him, he used his knife to kill some of them. He was determined to defend himself even if it would cost him his only life. The movie ends with Just Want being fatigued and badly wounded after 72 hours of struggling against the intruders, and he is unable to defend himself. While he was on his knees, barely aware, a Chinese officer approached him and sliced his neck behind his back, causing him to die. The rifleman Just Want Singh Rawat died in his motherland's defense, using every weapon available to him. He made the ultimate sacrifice in order to safeguard the future. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.